Hello and welcome to Let's Learn C++ Lesson 3.1. Today I'm going to teach you about vectors. Vectors are just another way of doing an array, but they're much more useful and they're dynamic, which means the size changes automatically with what you do. So what we're going to do is we are going to change the address book program that we had last time to just to use vectors. It's the same thing, but uh, we're going to take out the array and replace it with a vector. So, uh, the first thing you'll notice up here, I have a header file, found include vector, since we're going to work with the vectors. Now, the vector is part of the standard namespace, so if I wasn't using using namespace std, I'd have to put std colon colon in front of the vector definition. But, since we're using it, I don't need to. So, if you look at the vector definition, you'll see it says vector, then it has a less than string greater than, and then a space contacts. Now, this entire thing from vector to the last uh, greater than is all the data type. You know, the data type for, for an integer is int. The data type for this vector is a vector string. So what this means is we're going to be declaring a vector, and then you put a less than and greater than. This is called a template. Now, a template, uh, say a template for a, a greeting card you're going to make in some... Uh, Microsoft Publisher or something. Uh, a, a template is just something you start out with and you build off of that. So, a, a template in C++ simply gives uh, gives our, our, our vector a type. And everything inside the vector has to be that type. So, everything inside this vector has to be a string. So, we have our string vector, and we put a space and we name it just like we always do with a variable. We, we're going to name it context, just like we did last time. So, the next thing you'll notice is that here in choose a selection, we have add contact, view context, and I added one, remove contact. So, I'm going to show you how to actually take something out of the vector, and I'm going to show you something really cool that it does for you. Makes it so much easy. Er, pfft, can't even talk right. Anyway, so we come down here to if choice equals A, if you remember correctly, this is the adding a contact. If they enter A, it'll say, please enter the name of the contact. And then we'll create a string of variable. We're going to call it tempVar. This stands for temporary variable. And since it's declared inside of the if statement, remember, tempVar is going to be destroyed at the end of this if statement. It's not going to exist anywhere except inside of this if statement. So string tempVar get line, and we're going to save our input in tempVar. And that's going to be the name of the contact. Now, for the contacts here, to get it in the vector, we're going to say contacts dot pushback. Now, pushback, all it does is it fills the current spot that's open, and then it pushes to the next one. So that way, the next input is saved in that spot, and then it pushes the next one. The next input is saved in that spot. So it, it just st starts at the. So it just starts at the first one, and <laughs> it just fills up as you go. Sorry about that. That was my phone ringing. <laughs> Anyway, so you'll notice the next one is choice V. When they enter V for view, it's going to say you have contacts.size. Now remember last time we had an integer variable called total contacts, and we increased it every time that we added one so we could keep track of how many contacts we had saved in the array. Well, with vectors, you don't have to. It tells you the size. You just have to use the size member function, contacts.size, and it'll return the exact size of how many uh elements are inside of the vector. So it's going to return that, and now in our for loop, for int i equals zero, i is less than contacts.size. So as long as i is less than the amount of uh, contacts inside of the vector, we're going to keep looping. It's just another way to use the size. Whereas last time we used to total contacts. And then for, the for inside the for loop, we're going to say c out less than less than i just to give us our number, just like we did last time, our position number. And then we're going to see out contacts dot at position i. Now, what is this, like, just read this to yourself without the dot. What does it sound like? Contacts at i. Now remember, with an array, we did this. Contacts bracket i bracket contacts at position i. 
This is context at i, the same thing, context at position i. It's just a member function for it. Now, if you do want to do it the other way, vectors do indeed allow you to do it with the brackets, just like you would an array. I like to use uh, the at member function, just so I remember it's a vector. It, it just keeps my mind in the right track <laughs> without confusing myself. So, um, But you can do it either way. It's completely up to you. So this is going to return the position, or sorry, the, the value that is at position i at the current time. So then, here's the remove part. If they enter r, then we're going to create another temporary variable called int pos, p-o-s. And we're going to say enter the vector position for the contact in question. Now, this is not going to be very user-friendly. <laughs> of course, a real address book would not say enter the vector position for the contact in question, because the, the user wouldn't know what to do with that. But <laughs> since for all practical purposes, we know what to do with the vector position, since I've already taught you that, we're just going to go ahead and say that for learning purposes. So we get the position with a CN, and then we clear the input buffer with ignore, so we don't run into any problems. And then we say contacts.erase. Now the erase, all it does is erases one or more elements. Now, keep in mind that the vector is dynamic. Now, the size changes all the time. The size is going to depend on the last element, what position the last element is at. So if the size is going to change, that means that the last position is going to change positions as we gain and lose uh, elements. So say we erase the, the first element, uh, the element at position 0. We take it out. Now, common sense would tell you that there's going to be a big hole in... Uh, in the vector now, it's going to be a blank, and then position 1, position 2, position 3, position 4. It's going to be nothing at position 0. Well, that's what's great about vectors, is it would fill that hole in for you. What it does is it takes it out, takes everything behind it, and moves it up once. That way you have a constant string of uh, uh, values, and there's no holes in there. It's like automatic defragmentation. You know, defragmenting your computer, you, you move files around in the hard drive to get them all together, grouped together so you have more, have more space. Well, this is like automatic defragmentation of your vector. It's real simple and very handy. So you, so you don't have to manually move them around with for loops and everything. And more temporary variables. That's just a pain. So vectors make that all easy for us. Now, let me talk about the parameters in the erase. The erase simply takes the position at the variable you want to get rid of. Now, you can have it with one argument or two arguments. The first argument is always the starting position. It's the starting position that you want to erase at. And then the second argument is the ending position. So say I wanted to erase everything from position 2 to 4. I put in position 2, position 4, and it erase everything from 2 to 4. Just like that. But if I only want to erase position 2, I just put in 2. One argument. That's it. It's real simple. But, you see, this looks real complicated, right? Well, the, the type for the erase member function has to be an iterator. And you're like, okay, how do we declare an iterator value? Well, you could just say iterator, or you can do it this way. I find this a lot easier. It saves me time and memory. And of course, not much, but a little bit. <laughs> anyway, context.begin. All this does is it returns an iterator to the beginning of the vector. Real simple. It says it in its title, context.begin. Begin. It puts an iterator at the beginning. And it is, an, in fact, an iterator type. It's not just an integer. So if you have your, iter your iterator at position 0, because it's at the beginning, position 0, plus POS, which was the, the position that we uh, had, had entered to take out a, a contact at, well, if the beginning is position 0, 0 plus the position that we want to take out is indeed the position we want to take out because adding 0 doesn't change it at all. So if we just say beginning plus pos, that'll give us the exact place that we want to take it out. We can just take it out right there. It's real simple. There's nothing to be confused about in that manner. So um, let me just go ahead and run this for you and show you that it all works. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but do notice that pushback's argument is temp var which is the string that we wanted to, to name the contact. It is uh, just whatever you want to put in the array, you put in the position, or uh, sorry, the, the argument of pushback. So let me run this.
And while I wait, let me go look at some Rage comics. Excuse me. Okay, now we got this baby running. Welcome to Temporary Address Book. Choose a selection. Okay, we're gonna add, add a contact. We'll say Johnny Bravo. Alright, so now let's view the contacts. You have one contact, so that's the use of our contacts.size. You have contacts.size 1. We do have one. At position 0 is Johnny Bravo, right where we put it. So you can see that pushback works that filled in position 0. So now let's add another one. We'll say Mega Man. And we'll view again. You have two contacts. That's the size again, changing its size automatically. Johnny Bravo and Mega Man at position 0 and 1, respectively. Just like that. Now, let me test the remove contact. Since, since this is telling us that Johnny Bravo is at position 0, well, let's take him out. Position 0. So now let's view the contacts again. You can see that we only have Mega Man left. So, if Johnny Bravo was at position 0 and Mega Man was at position 1, and we took out Johnny Bravo and it left a hole, then that means Mega Man is still at 1. And if we tried to take out position 0 again, it would give us an error because there's nothing there. But, watch this. R, 0. No error. View contacts. You have 0 contacts. So, this successfully proves that whenever we took out Johnny Bravo, it moved Mega Man up to the first slot. So that way we can just take him out with 0, just like we... We could anything. It filled in the spaces for us. It's very, very, very handy. Vectors are very important, and I, it would behoove you to learn them. <laughs> I like that word. Anyway, um, that's all I have for this lesson. I, I do encourage you to visit c++.com again. They have their documentation. Type in vector in the search bar, and it'll give you all the member functions for vector. Just play around with them. It gives you examples. Uh, it tells you all the information about the member functions. Just go look at them. If you have questions, you can ask me. If you have questions, you can ask the forum on c++.com. You can ask the forum on my website. You can ask my Twitter. Just be, be resourceful. Learn your stuff, and you'll become a great programmer in time. <laughs> well, that's all I have for this lesson. Uh, remember to follow me on Twitter, guys. Thanks for watching.